Okay, next we're going to talk about all of the other levels. Now, I have laid down a track on our bottom level. We can see it right here. It sounds like this. Like before, I've got 16 steps set to eighth notes. So it's two measures. And I've chosen these notes. And right now we just have a couple of oscillators with very basic settings, no filter, anything. This is where we start to have fun. Okay, we were having fun before, but now we're gonna have more fun. Uh, let's click on track select. Okay, now let's remember what we're seeing right here uh, is a set of 16 steps. This is track one though. We have 15 more uh, tracks atop this track that we can fill with anything we want. So let's do that. Track select. Let's select track two. Track two says none. That means we haven't set a destination for it. While I'm holding this, we can actually set a destination if we want. For example, I'm going to click one, which is oscillator one. You can't see it. I've clicked oscillator one. And now as I continue to hold track select, I'm going to turn a knob marked shape mod pulse width. Now track two governs oscillator one waveform modulation. All of the steps are ready to go. And here's what we can do. We could theoretically go in and uh, choose each step and then go to the value and set the value. We have 127 in both directions. So what this is doing is it's modifying the wave shape of oscillator one, which is currently set to a sawtooth wave. So we could just go in and random, well, I'm just gonna randomly choose values here. So you can see what I'm doing. You can see what's happening here. I am setting values for where the wave shape should be at each step. So let's hear what it sounds like. Two, so we can hear the changes in the wave shape of oscillator one. Now we also could do things like we, we also have slew here and we have tie here. So we can tie values together and slew values together. So the changes between them are delayed with slew and changes are tied together with tie. And so you can see what the outcome of that would be. And here for fun, here's what we'll do. We'll track select three. I just clicked on the three over here, which is another way you can do it. And we'll make that destination oscillator mod two, oscillator two modulation. So we're gonna do the same thing to oscillator two. But I'm gonna show you a different way we can do this. Okay, it's playing, right? So what I can do is I can hold down record and then actually just turn, you can't see it in this, but I'm pointing at the shape mod knob in oscillator two 
and I can hold record at the appropriate place and turn that mod knob and it will record those those changes into track three of the sequencer. So that's what we're gonna do. Right now, we can only hear oscillator one. So let's take oscillator one out of the picture. Bring oscillator two back into the picture. Now a cool thing has happened here. Because you can choose a duty cycle of zero when you're affecting what we're basically doing right now is pulse width modulation on oscillator two because it's a square wave. So if I use the shape mod pulse width knob, it's possible for me to choose a uh, pulse width of zero. And so now you're hearing notes disappear because I've done that. And that's an important little hint because you have the ability to control whether a note is playing if that if the note is an, a square wave oscillator that you have given a pulse width of zero. So now we have rests that are not reflected by the sequencer, but are created by your real-time manipulation of the pulse width uh, by holding record while the sequencer is playing. So let's bring oscillator one back in. So we've just created interesting accents and interesting waveform variation. Oscillator one is a sawtooth wave and we have created a shape like this, as you can see. That's what's happening as far as our waveform modulation with track two, which is oscillator one's wave shape. And if we go to track three, we see what's happening with oscillator two's wave shape that we've modulated. And that's cool. It's a great demonstration of what's happening. But I know what you really, really want to do is go here and then choose Okay, this is really important. I'm holding down track select and I'm about to turn the cutoff knob for low pass, for filter one's low pass cutoff frequency. So by holding this right now, if I turn this knob, it'll automatically set track four to that function. Now we can do the same thing where we can, we can go in and set specific values, which might be interesting here. Let's try that. differently because we have set these values for what the filter should be doing using the track that we're on which is track four and certainly uh, you have the ability to manually set where the starting point of that cutoff frequency is now these make a little bit more sense and certainly we can turn up resonance and you know what if you're like sitting there going well it'd be cool if the resonance was really high on some of those values or really low on some other values well guess what we can totally do that too let's go to track five let's go crazy holding down track select and now i'm going to choose resonance and it's going to say oh you just moved resonance that's what this is now now let's again go crazy and choose independent no actually with this one 
let's do this thing where I hold record and then I do it by hand. Okay, ready? We're gonna start at one. Just by turning the knob within the space of this uh, sequence, we've set the values. <laughs> I mean, we're... Okay, I'm really excited about this. It's hard not to be. We have all these tracks that we can do all kinds of incredible modulations. And we have even touched on where we could direct this to. We can direct it to the LFO or the delay or the other filter. We could activate the other filter or we could direct it to amplifier envelope values. You are so unlimited with this. And the more you use these various tracks of modulation and create them, the more amazing things you can do. And also, we could be like with any um, with any track on this sequence, we can take out steps. So if we were listening to this in real time, we could be adding in these uh, resonance steps. Okay, that one wasn't very interesting. So you can see, like as a performance tool, you can be just going crazy with this, choosing steps which activate various values on all of the different tracks that you have. Right now I'm holding down the button, I can also choose using these buttons if I don't want to use this knob over here. And we could take these out too. We can make very specific choices about... So you can see the <laughs> ridiculous variation that you have possible. Let's see, what, what do we got going here? Six, six doesn't have anything open. I'm gonna choose, if you hold down track select, you can choose things like, look at these, decimate. You could, you could animate decimate. I'm going to choose though, something much more obnoxious, distortion. So let's on, you want to add some punch? Here's how you do it. Let's hold this track. Go back to, what was that? This one, open these all back up so we can just. So you see where I'm going with this. I mean, I think you can tell, like, we start messing with amplifier, uh, the release values. Like, imagine. Any knob I turn, we can automate those values and create something really cool. So, you know. This is an incredibly powerful tool. It's not just for making really cool dance bass tracks. It's also a modulation tool of incredible power, an incredibly massive, controllable, multi-stage envelope. Uh, so yeah, I hope that's come across. I haven't even scratched the surface of what you could possibly be doing with this thing. And I've only used five of the tracks. We have from six to, or seven to 16, depending on how many tracks I actually used. Oh, so yeah. 
I think we would have been on, yeah, track seven. Anyway, the point is, you can see, you can create values in any set sequence for all kinds of things that you, all kinds of different functionalities that you can direct a sequence track to. Yes, amazing. That should scare you, because it scares me.